Yes, mic check, mic check. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. See what a college education does for That's you? That's great. You know, I never know what to say in those things. <laughs> Mel Brooks told me to always say, he was dead when I got there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he says to check him out. Oh, he's a mighty man. Speed. And action. Well, Gregory, I was looking forward to seeing you because we had a very nice visit when you were doing Cotton Club. Right at the time, right. it was opening, yes. Right. And uh, at the time, you were already working on White Nights. Right. The last time I saw you, um, actually, I had worked the night before, and then I took a Concord back from London to do the junket that we, we saw each other at, and then I flew right back that night. And uh, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I would do anything for Taylor Hackford. You know, he really, he's one of those guys that really, uh, he's open to allowing you to do other things and trying to help make it happen. And I really wanted to promote the Cotton Club as much as I could, so he, he really helped me out. That's great. I enjoyed the, the picture so much, White Nights, and, and loved your performance. It's just wonderful. Thank you. And uh, it's great to see that you're developing into such a good actor. We've always known you were a good dancer, but now we're seeing the acting side of you. But one of the things I wanted to, to ask you about is, uh, I have followed Baryshnikov's career forever, and um, uh, he is such a precise dancer, and he's so structured because mm -hmm. that's his classical training. You, on the other hand, you're jazz-oriented, you're very spontaneous. Now, which of you had the harder adjustment to make when you were dancing together? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's very unusual. He, he, his background is a very structured background, and he, you know, the roles that he, he dances are classical roles, and, and the choreography is set. But uh, he has a side of him, a real intense improvisationalistic side of him. And uh, so the first three weeks that we danced together, that's all we did. We just, you know, uh, tried steps, you know, we banged into one another and, and uh, we just experimented with, with, uh, with dance. And uh, a lot of times, you know, I remember w the first week we were together, you know, he did a lot of jumping because he wanted to see, you know, uh, you know, how well I could jump. And a lot of times I would see him just jump up in the air and I knew that he really didn't have any idea what he was going to do yet. But, you know, he can stay up for a while. So <laughs> he would figure out when he was up there. And then we would jump together, you know, and I, up in the in, in air, I'd be like, you know, I'd be straining to stay up for as long as I could. And I'd look at him in the air and he would be looking at me like he was just sitting in a chair, you know. And then he would watch me go down and then he would come down, <laughs> you know, and join me. And we just, we just had a great time. We had a lot of laughs, you know, and Twyla was there and she was saying, come on, let's, come on, stop this fooling one. And uh, naturally we would jump her. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, it, I think that, that what happened was he was really game and, and uh, he's very interested in rhythm and we, we wanted to just try as many different things as we could. Um, so it was, it was a great experience. Wanted to ask you also about your character because here is your character, a black American who defects to Russia. Now a lot of people, uh, before they see the movie, are going to say, ah, oh, come on. Uh, how did you uh, rationalize that, Gregory? Well, uh, I remember as a, as, a, as a young boy, when I was about 16, 17, uh, through my father I met a lot of jazz musicians. And uh, uh, there were a lot of great jazz musicians who expatriated from the United States to Europe uh, in the mid-60s uh, because they felt that, uh, that jazz and their work it wasn't appreciated here in America. And they went to Europe and enjoyed many years of, of recognition and respect that they didn't have here. Um, I also knew that uh, there was a tremendous amount of men who, who uh, deserted during the Vietnam War. Uh, more than any other war previous to that. And um, while I was in Helsinki shooting the movie, uh, I was on the street one day and, and I saw a black man on the street. And you don't see too many black men walking the streets of Helsinki. And he, you know, he waved to me. And, and I started running you know, towards him because you know, in America, black people, they acknowledge each other on the streets, but a lot of times they don't. And in, in Britain, black people, they don't even see one another. I mean, they, they just, you know, there's no acknowledgement hardly at all. So when we saw one another, I mean, there was no denying that here we were. 
And he was a man who had left the United States about 12 years ago. Um, he had done something, you know, illegal. And he, he wanted to, he just went straight to Helsinki. He married a, a Finnish woman, and that's where he was living. And he missed the United States. But um, he had made a choice. You know, my character, uh, in some ways, he made a choice, but he, was, he had lost control of his life already in the Vietnam War. And he, he was trying to get, regain some control. He was, he was he just so frightened. And he went to Russia and became politicized. And at the point when our story picks up, he's just, you know, he's a man who is, in, in many ways, lost control of his life. He has no country. He just has uh, his wife. And uh, Brezhnikov's character really brings him face to face with uh, a lot of truths, a lot of demons that, that he can't deny. Have you seen Brezhnikov recently? Uh, last time I saw him was a couple of months ago. How's he doing? Because he had knee surgery after the film, didn't he? Uh, he had knee surgery about uh, three months ago, two and a half months ago. But he's, you know, he's dancing again. Is he really? Yeah, he's uh, he's doing it again. Whoa, thunder! Wow, <laughs> is that Brishnikov? <laughs> Hello, Mikhail. Over the and you call him Mike, huh? Yeah, yeah. The first Russian uh, class I had to learn how to speak Russian. There was a conversation between these two guys. One guy's name was Vladimir, and the other guy's name was uh, Michael. And the one guy called him Misha. And then down at the bottom of the page, it had an asterisk next to Misha that said Misha Mike. You know, Misha's like a nickname. So I just started to call him Mike. And, you know, a lot of times nobody knew who I was talking about on the set. You know, I'd say, have you seen Mike? You know, and, uh, and Isabella, she kept, you know, saying, Misha, Misha, why are you calling him Mike? You know, but... Uh, Did he like it? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't mind. Yeah. Okay. Well, Gregory, the time goes much too fast. But again, let me tell you how much I enjoyed the film. I think it's going to be a big hit for you. I really Thanks, do. Mom. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Have you seen people reacting to the trailer? Is yeah. It? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, the I, audience I feel is ready very for proud it. Of, of the film, and so far, the response that I've that I've felt from people has has encouraged that pride. I feel good. really good about it. Well, maybe we'll see you uh, when you do the next picture. Maybe you'll do a junket. Definitely. Okay. We got a date. Thanks. Stop tape. Enjoyed.